Today, a quick tutorial on repairing a TPO-FPO membrane or modified EPDM. Not pure EPDM, which is well doubled. Here we have a standard cut, such a 5-7 cm cut. Here we have a standard slit, such a 5-7 cm slit. Now, just as we are recording the winter season also getting more and more it will be. The patch cut, five centimeters on each side, that is if we were to have some smiling, that kind of thing, then five centimeters from this, from that, and from that, not five centimeters like this. We have selected this patch, and now we're going to show the welding, meaning we have to have electricity, and we're welding in dry conditions. We show this I have on the AT4000 model to show that even the cheapest such model, which from time to time if you are repairing, is perfectly sufficient. It is known that for roofs, the Bosite E or Bosite D model, that is the professional model, is recommended and those who do it go on the Bosite D model. That's so 99% of the work of this type, possibly D+. Plus. We said the max blowout that is as we have here and now yes the temperature about 400 degrees in these conditions we have now it will heat up two three minutes with professional equipment even four or five that is both side d we wait for it to heat up in the meantime for those who have seen whether it's a PVC video or work on PVC membrane. If you have been working on PVC membrane all the time, then modified EPDM or TPO, FPO, this type behaves completely differently when sealing. If you have been working and from the very beginning you are welding on PVC, then I suggest you make yourself the type of patches we are doing now or overlap welding to each other on such a membrane. Here we have an alpha dam membrane with a mesh inside. The color is black on the outside, on the inside so slightly grayish. This is the new generation of these membranes. We show it on the cheapest model that it also goes. Of course, we don't use it for continuous work because it's not this equipment, but it can be done. I'll demonstrate on the ordinary cheapest roller we have. I won't use that roller or Teflon pressure. So as to simplify it as much as possible. Although of course these two things simplify. That is they make it faster and it's more convenient to do it. But we won't use that. So that we make it a little more difficult for ourselves. We apply in the middle of each other looking and tilting. I tilt it back, insert the nozzle. I hold myself a little and such hefting, prefixing so that it does not move for me. Those who are doing it for the first time, it's good for them to know. We have a patch and now the most important thing is that I have here in the middle hefted, I insert the nozzle. I have to heat the diaphragm. to such a degree that she's laying out nicely for me. The light smoke you see here in the video, I hope he is indicated, but light, not big, just light. And now I'm driving and I'm reheating and I'm pressing down. Now keep in mind that this temperature that we have set is related to two factors. The temperature at which we are doing the job, that is if it's cold, that temperature I'm pulling up. And the second thing, the speed at which I'm welding. That's why what we're doing now, you should, if someone is doing it for the first time, a couple of these patches. As someone is transitioning from PVC, get yourself one such patch, mainly to see how this material behaves. I operate here, as you can see, left hand, right hand. Take a test for yourself. Normally you can walk around mostly. And press down and reheat. See this piece, how nice it looks. Then we'll check if it sticks or not and evaluate. From 
the inside. We press down and go on our way. You can't leave air inside. That's the most important thing. These types of pieces, especially for beginners, are difficult. We don't heat all over, that's how we don't drive. I just insert the nozzle, here a piece, and press down. I insert all the rest, only then do I press down. And at the very end I drive. And lightly unmold myself. You can also do this with the glue from a couple of videos earlier. That is 812 with primer. If for some reason it doesn't go for you, or you're done, the electricity was disconnected, there was no electricity, anything else. You can't leave something like that. Even though, see, I'm testing myself. Here a piece still underheated. I need to reheat. Here it's all okay now. I push in and press down. Keep in mind that I cannot reheat. Put down, wait, light a cigarette and press because this temperature cools down too quickly. The membrane itself. See, no problem. Hard to reach place and I go. I press them on, press down and heat all the time. Light smoke. On the video maybe you will see. Here there is no smoke like with PVC. This is TPO, FPO material. Light can be, if it's too big it can already be a problem. I push in and press down. Okay, great, good. Well, and now I made myself wait it until it cooled down. Check lightly with a screwdriver, scissors, a hook with our heating tester. Check if everything is okay. Not forcibly. Here it is not to be forcibly. Here's still this piece, something like this, see? But I haven't heated it up there yet. I insert the nozzle, heat it up and press down. Well, and now for sure, because the diaphragm has warmed up nicely and slightly so flattened, and I'm going around the, the whole patch to get just such an effect, a nice W cause that will cause us this. That is, I heat up and drive, heat up and drive. With other rollers, it would be easier, but that's not the point to see that with such a set, you can do it. See, the water runs off, it runs off, and it doesn't stay here which is the most common mistake. It runs off, it doesn't penetrate inside, especially when there will be a transition through zero. That is frost. And it slowly blows us up, and this kind of thing later is problematic. If you don't have a welding machine, don't have access to electricity, then do it with ATK 812 glue.